Hey guys, this is Dapson Ishmael. So I've been using WYSIWYG Web Builder close to about seven years now. I started off with version 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, and now there's going to be version 16. So if you've been using WYSIWYG Web Builder, you realize that over the years, it has gone some massive improvement, additions, and many more. Now, I've personally enjoyed using WYSIWYG Web Builder so far, and I can't actually keep calm waiting and looking forward to version 16. So this is actually a teaser to version 16, which has a lot more new features which are going to be added. So in this particular video, we are going to take a look at some of these features. We should be looking forward to how they are going to work and why you actually need to, you know, probably get um, to use it in your website project. So let's go ahead and I get started. So the first on the list is um, editable content. So now on this particular section, we'll be taking a look at a lot of additions and improvement to the CMS um, set of tools. So it's been a bit dormant for some time, but this is actually more or less like a revive to it. So let's talk about editable content. So editable content easily allows you to edit content, especially on your website that you probably might want to be making some changes to more or less like some sort of dynamic feature in there where you don't necessarily have to always do things on your website and then upload it this time around. You could have specific pages that you want to edit certain aspects of it, which you probably, you know, make it, it makes it easier for you to use this particular tool to do that. Now, the good thing about this is you don't need any MySQL database. So this is going to be dwelling on the flat file database, which is going to make it easier for you to go about. So there are some pages in here, which uh, so this is actually more or less like a sample where you get to see how the editable content works now. There's actually a tutorial also over here, which gives you more information or in-depth um, overview about how this um, particular content is going to work. So um, just look forward to it in version 16 of WYSIWYG Web Builder. The next option is page list, which is part of the CMS set of um, tools that allows you to display um, object or should I say pages that were last edited on your um, blog post or your website, especially using the CMS um, tool. So that's also um, one tool that you should be looking forward to. And there's an example of it in here where you get to see the page, the data was um, edited as well as the, um, should I say, a short or overview about the content in there. And then you also have popular articles. Now this is going to make it easier for people to see, should I say, trending posts or articles on your website. So this is going to displace um, post that has had a lot of views on your website with your CMS tools. And then there's fixed content in here, which allows you to specify specific um, page IDs that is going to be, um, should I say, um, shown as the last edited or last article that was posted and, and, and more. So these are some of the things you should be looking for it to, especially with the CMS tools, some basic and advanced additions, which has been added to it in there. And then we have the CMS menu. This time around, you have the chance of specifying the maximum menu item. So previously, or actually as of now with version 15 and previous versions, with the CMS menu, when once um, you actually create a page or a post and there's a menu created for it, it shows as part of all the menus. But this time around, you can specify the number of or maximum menu items that you want to show especially with the CMS menu. So that's how to go about it over there. And then as part of it also, you can specify one particular link, which is going to be dedicated to as the home link, which is always going to go to the home section. So that's um, it here. And then you also get to also specify, should I say translate certain um, characters or text to um, specific um, names or whichever way you want it. So that's part of the CMS tools you should be looking for it too. And then finally here, you also have um, a sort of, should I say, a, this is a pie chart here, which gives you an overview about how your pages are performing on your website. So that's a plugin with, which is part of the CMS tools there. And then you also have um, this new feature, which is a blog plugin that allows you to easily add um, CMS pages to your website and easily edit them and many more. So let's keep exploring and now let's come to the card section so there's cms card which allows you to actually use the normal card we have in here as part of the cms tools 
this time around you can actually edit certain part of the card to display certain content so as you take a look at this over here so you have article by this is a cms tag here which is going to grabs whatever um name you put in here from the database and then shows it here so this is how that is going to look so as you can see we have article by and then admin article title and then you have the article itself as well as you can actually read more in there and then also as part of the overlay responsive menu and then teamable uh, menu the cms option which allows you to also add your know, cms menu to using this kind of uh, menu options in there now the next thing we have here is pixar b if you've ever used stock photos and the rest uh, you know that pixar b happens to be one of the sites that has a lot of stock photos as well as videos but on this particular um, or with this particular feature, you have the chance to use stock photos from Pixar Bay without you necessarily going out to download images and then add them to your website. So on Splash is currently available, but Pixar Bay is also going to make it much more easier to add more images, you know, have a variety of image content as part of your project. And then there's WebP images. So WebP images allows you to have, um, should I say, a lower version with same quality of images on your website, which allows a fast load time. It doesn't take so much time and resources to, to load some of these images because the sizes are very low, which is actually good for especially mobile devices, which wouldn't require a lot of resources to load them. And then we have cache busting. So cache busting is also one of the ways which is going to help, especially with loading faster of your website. So this is going to, um, should I say, cache some of these um, elements, which are most of the time the same, on your website with the browser uh, so that not necessarily with the browser probably with the host pc so that whenever the website is visited it is easily going to draw from those images and then display them without necessarily always having had to download them and then next in here we have responsive under responsive design there's a, an added feature which allows you to specify specific font sizes which are get to a specific um should i say breakpoint so an example is if sure in case let's say you have um, a 14 pixels um, text size for default layout and you want all those 14 pixels to be um, 10 to 12 pixels on maybe mobile that's 320 pixels breakpoint once you specify all the breakpoints um, with their font sizes once you switch to whatever device it, or whatever breakpoint it is automatically going to adopt that particular font size and then the good thing is you can actually define these font sizes with their respective or corresponding um breakpoint font size and then once you start working with them and you specify the size in your project it is automatically going to have them affected there's also morphin shape which allows you to add a lot more shapes to your project now the cool thing about morphin shape is that it allows you to add some form of animations or transitions to um, these images which you know looks a bit cool let me see if i can find some demo in here to see how this is actually going to behave so I'm trying to get one so as you can see this is how morphin you know um, shapes are actually going to behave and this is actually a unique way to add more interactive content to your website so that's one of the things you should be looking forward to in version 16 and this is uh, one of my favorites, which is Snap Scroll. Now, Snap Scroll allows you to add different pages or different sections of your website, which you can easily navigate to by using just um, the scroll options in here. So let's take a look at this preview so you get to appreciate it more. So once you come here, realize this is the Snap Scroll. Once I click on this, you realize it takes me there. Once I hit on the scroll um, button or um, section on my mouse, also it takes me to those various sections. This is actually cool. It happens to be a feature which is part of the um, carousel but the um, disadvantage is that you can't it's a bit difficult to work in with um, making it responsive especially when you're using that but with this it's going to be very easier to go about so those are um, the properties of the snap scroll as you can see in there and let's continue down so we have motion effects which allows you to add more should i say transitions or animations especially to your website now you can actually specify how you want animations to go as well as effect and then um, transitions on your website and this gives you a lot of flexibility being able to work with events and then transitions as well as animations. so that's one thing you should be looking forward to in there and then once you scroll down you realize that there are lots more you know animations which are also added as part of it now we have the line to which has 
um, some kind of different shapes compared to what we had previously where it was just a line now this time around you have different you know about 16 different kind of lines that you can actually use and then as part of it also you can also add um, should i say text and then also um, icons to your lines and you can actually specify where you want them to be so as you can see over here we have a text in here we have um, icons positioned at different parts of our lines now the divider um, shape, um, shape divider is getting some um, additions which allows you to add animations to the shapes um, or the dividers that you add so let's take a look at this you realize let me just load this so we see you realize that this has some kind of um, should i say it's floating up or whatever animation that it is applied in there but that's um one of the things that you can actually do in version 16 especially when you're working with um shape divider so in case you're a fan of animations and transitions then this is actually going to be a game changer especially working on your website and you can also tweak how these dividers or um yes these dividers appear or behave on your website so there are much more dividers you can be working with especially those which has animations as part or applied to them now coming to the photo gallery section the um, one of the features that has been added to photo gallery is you being able to sort or categorize um, photos to specific should i say names or categories so over here once you have or you see all the photos and once you come to nature it's going to show you only photos which are related to um, nature or you have specified relating to nature so let's just go ahead and take a look at this so as you can see once i go to beach i already see images which are related to beach and many more so let's continue and also as part of the photo gallery um option in here um full text has been added where once you hover over the uh, over a photo gallery object you see the full text details in here so let's come back and um, take a look at more so we also have the unite gallery being improved with a lot more features added to it so you should look forward to that let's go ahead and take a look at um, what this has to offer so this is um, examples of unite gallery being used at different sections so this is one two i have personally used a lot and it's actually good to see it improved with a lot more so let's continue to see what more we have in here um, so this is also part of the unite gallery um, okay so this is actually um, lc light box which is also one way you could also have your images displayed in a light box and then we also have um, strip light box which is also a way you could have your images uh, displayed and then finally here we have um, under the photo gallery you having a chance to add animations to be able to have some sort of interactive content especially with your images on your website so this is the first page of of the features that we should be looking forward to in version 16 let's go ahead and then go to the second page and take a look at more of the features in here so the first on the list is social login so i believe you've come to realize that now on a lot of websites which has um, should i say requirement of you having how to create an account or the chance of probably creating an account for different services and so on there's um the chance for you to be able to log in with your existing social media credentials this is actually an easy way so you don't have to always be creating passwords and creating usernames and many more so you can actually easily log in with facebook twitter instagram linkedin as well as spotify now this is the same thing or the same functionality which is being added to version 16 whereas once you have a form a sign up form on your website it's easier for people to select the option to sign up with their um, existing social media credentials so yeah that's um, one thing you should be looking forward to in version 16 and then also um, we have the flex box here which has some new addition where you can actually specify the order in which you want object or element to be displayed or arranged especially and breakpoint so let's take a look at what's happening here so this is a default view especially the desktop you have um content one showing here two as well as three now once you switch to 768 pixels breakpoint you can rearrange this by having content three showing first content two next and then content one and then once you also go to 48 pixels you can also change that as well so that's one um way you can actually go about using the flex box especially in a responsive way and um, version 16 of Wizard Web Builder. 
Now the same thing applies to the layout grid also, which has, uh, let me just scroll down there, which has the same functionality. And then also there is a stretch option, which allows you to align objects properly, especially with the layout grid. So you have a lot more options available in here. And um, yeah, so the viewport height has been improved. There's been additions of, um, I think, 775, um, 33 as well as 25 and then 10. It used to be, I think, 150. Now you have a lot more options there. And um, yeah, so let me just come to the layer section, which also has the same viewport height added to it, which is purposely for floating layer. So once you're using floating layer, which just behaves like the layout, get a flex box, you have these options to be able to align objects properly. And then also as part of the layer options, now you can also add the main tag. So it used to be these tags, which are, should I say, um, very good for search engine optimization because you are able to tag certain aspects of your website with different kind of content. So if it is article, it makes it easier for the bots or search engine uh, bots to probably tag this, um, should I say information as article and then show is um, show it as such in search engine. So the main option is here, which allows you to also specify main content on your website. And then also you have some um, added feature for alignment, especially with floating um, layout as well. And then also you have the chance to add padding, especially with floating elements within the um, layer two in there. As well as once you come to the header section also, there's been uh, an added feature which allows you to add some sort of animation once you scroll up, you have your header showing in a certain way as well as once you scroll down also, you can actually go ahead and change this um, mode of uh, operation, especially with the page header. So that's one too, you should also look for it too. And then as part of my favorite here, which is the HTML object, which now has some predefined um, tags or should I say snippets to it. So in case you want to add an image under normal circumstance, you probably would have written the entire code over here. Now this time around, you just go ahead to select from the snippets available, being its image, and then you are provided with the code. All you have to do is just provide the URL to the image or the link, as well as the alternative text for the image. And then with the link also, so let's just go ahead and take a look at how these work. So as you can see, we have span, and whatever information or text content you want to put in here, you can put that in there. You have script, you can write your script, you have style, you specify a style, and so on. Now, backup has been a part of the previous versions of Wizzy Web Builder. Now, the cool feature which has been added to the zip backup this time around is the chance of you being able to add a password to protect your backup so that once it ends in, um, should I say, um, unauthorized hands, they don't have access to your website file. So that's one cool feature in there. And then also, once you come down a bit, you have um, the card having some sort of improvement or additions, which um, this collapsible. I think there's a lot more. Let me just go ahead and then preview this link. So we take a look at some of the things available. So there's collapsible, expand, collapsible, expand. And then let's come back here and see more. There's also the list uh, option, which allows you to list icon plus text um, as part of um, the things you probably will be using in the card and then so as you can see, these are some of the examples in there. And then with the card also, you can also specify specific maximum width, especially when you're using them in flexible layouts, being it's flex box, um, as well as the layout grid or even the floating layer. Then you can also um, add manual trigger. That is with um, cards, which has a popover. Once you want to have a popover with a card, uh, you can actually specify how that functions. Once maybe a certain event, is met and then you have the um, card container also having some sort of masonry uh, mode added to it which allows you to arrange the card position in it in a masonry way so it couldn't it doesn't necessarily have to be a slider which is the default one but you can also have a masonry added to it in there and then once you come here also there's been um, an alignment property which allows you to align how the cards are going to show especially in the card um, container in there and then we have SVG animation, which allows you to animate SVG. So SVG is scalable vector graphics, which um, uh, it's it's easily animated once you have them on your website. So this time around, you can actually have them animated. Let me just go ahead and then take a look at um, a preview of it. So as you can see, this is um, an easy way to have some sort of you know animation using SVGs, which is actually 
um, available in version 15 but this time around there's a lot more um, improvements which um, with a specifically animate you know fill option here which allows you to animate and have them filled with different colors and, and so on so that's where the svg in there and then you also have um shapes so so i think um, the same svg you know properties um there's a lot more added to it there and then you also have an event which allows you to how um to control how you want your svgs to probably display now the good thing about um version 16 which has been part of actually a previous version is that there are a couple of free templates which allows you to see how some of these tools has been used so this is um i think um one of the ship um, which has been used so you can actually take a look at it by downloading it and then once you open it in your version 16 you see how they were used so um it's currently not available for download because version 16 is not out yet but once it's out we will see how best to go about that of course i'll be trying my possible best to make a lot more awesome tutorials uh, on them so these are a lot more templates and then you also have Ken Benz here, which is um, a lightweight solution to especially CSS animation. So this doesn't take a lot more resources compared to the normal CSS animations and transitions. So that's one feature you should be probably using, especially if you are looking at content specifically geared towards mobile devices. And then you also have um, LS um, light box. So this is also an improvement to the light box, how you have objects, you know, displayed in a light box here and then once you scroll down a bit once you're using an image you also have an event to be able to specify the behavior of the image now the panel layer also has um, an ability to set a trigger for it by using shall i say an icon which now you can add some sort of animation to it so let's just go ahead and then take a look at this to appreciate it more so let me just preview this and the browser so as you can see uh let me just so you realize that once i click on this it's collapse and becomes one to show you that actually the panel menu is open and then once i close this it is actually going to export and then you have this also here so these are you know very cool ways which you actually you find on a lot of websites so this is going to be easier to integrate or use in version 16. let's go ahead and then head to the third page and then see what we have more in here so the first thing we have here has to still do with the panel um layer which now you can actually control how they are positioned whether being it fixed as well as static so you can actually go ahead and then um, tweak that or have that done as well as you have the dialogue so your dialog boxes especially with bootstrap you can actually have um, now you have a lot more animations that you can actually control or select uh, how you want dialog boxes to show once a certain conditions are met on your website and then also there's added border radius property to the um, dialog box which you can also add some form of um, radius to the edges of your dialog boxes and then there's added full width to horizontal alignment as well as um you know full height to vertical alignment with your um, dialog boxes that's with the bootstrap dialog boxes and then also the rollover here having um, some improvement or an addition to it let's take a look at how this is going to work so as you can see this is something you should be looking forward to especially with the rollover um object in version 16 of WYSIWYG web builder let me continue down um so these are some of the animations that you can or transitions yeah exactly animations over here which you can actually select from with regard to the rollover layer and um, there are lots more added to the rollover layer and then also you have with the html5 video the ability to select a stock video so from pixabay so just as we saw stock photos from pixabay this time around also in a, in a, um, instead of downloading videos that you probably would want to have on your website with the html5 object this time around you can actually specify or select um, videos from pixabay and then you can also select the controls or how you want the html5 video player to show in your website so that's actually a demo of it um, happening over here and uh, let's go down a little bit more to see what we have more so we also have um, as part of the media player you can actually play um, in line so let's go ahead and read it so it says a boolean attribute indicating that the video is to be played in line that is within the element playback area so um, we we'll actually appreciate this more once you get to use it in version 16 so that's um, part of the features of the media player and um, so this is use player in case you want to use the player the player um, player you can actually go ahead and select that for your html5 
video player and then there are some few more templates over here now as part of the page properties you can this time around specify a select gradient where it's different or i think i did um styles here so i think there are about 28 different um, um gradient styles which has been added we can which you can actually select and apply to your pages to add some kind of flair or should i say um make your pages look much more cool uh in your website project and then once you come down a bit there's also this uh, functionality that allows you to disable css animations and transitions you probably might know that um, animations sometimes don't really do so much for especially on mobile devices now it's actually cool to have them disabled if you don't want to have distorted animations on your website especially on mobile devices so once you turn on this feature on your mobile devices you wouldn't be having any sort of animations which are struggle to i'm uh, struggling to play and so on and then also you can there, there there's this unique feature which allows you to this time around rotate objects on your website so if probably you want to have your html5 video player or maybe youtube video player whatever object it is you can this time around rotate it to probably display the way you feel it should display to correspond to the content on your website so let's continue and um, there's also the capture functionality that allows you to specify a color for whatever object that is going to be shown for the capture and then also um, you also have um, ways you can have your capture displayed so that once uh, probably should i say verification is being done it makes it easier for humans as well as difficult for bots and then also with a capture this time around you can also include some kind of characters that you want to have accepted or avoided um, depending on how you want to have your capture you know configured and um, you can also specify the type being it mass being it whatever it is you can actually go ahead and specify it so that once you come to the website you probably would have to um, provide solutions to the maths before you can actually um, should i say allow to do whatever um, the capture is um, you know attached to and then you can also specify the capture you want to use whether you want to use a normal capture you want to use that from google being a version 2 as well as version 3 i wish the invisible one i think the invisible one is probably part of version 3 so that is actually um, how to go about using capture and then you also have h capture also in here and um, you can also go ahead to specify the properties or um, uh, that is add how you want your capture error messages to show so you can go ahead and customize that also here and then also as part of the form you can also include um, check boxes um, which are actually present but this time around you can actually have them either on or, or off as part of the properties for the check boxes and then also one of the features that has been added to the form is the ability of you to select multiple files for upload so in case there's an upload um, section added to your form you can now add or select different um, files especially if they are a specific um, file type you can actually have them selected and then uploaded and then also as part of the form you have the um, ability to use the advanced button as a link which is going to be linked to specific page or section once they are clicked on and then you have some um, you know um, option or should i say property added to the teamable button which allows you to specify cursor once you hover over it then it gives you a hand and um, a cursor that is um corresponding to whatever it is so if it is help it probably will give you the help uh cursor which should let you know that it's actually help you are seeking for you are looking for it too and then also as part of it there is also added um, alignment property for the style section for your teamable button and uh, many more as well as a couple more templates in here so let's go ahead and then continue to page four and see so this is actually going to be a lengthy video because there are lots more features which are coming to version 16 which i actually can't wait to have it you know probably start using it so let's go ahead and take a look at the fourth page and see what we have in there as well so on the fourth page we still have a couple of you know templates added in here now let's go to the tab section so this time around you can add steps to uh, should I say how you're, you probably would want a checkout process or a form field or whatever it is to your um, website project. Now this makes it easy, especially if it's a um, should I say a shopping, um, an e-commerce website you have. You can add, you know, should I say the tabs here, which are going to be in steps. So once you're done with one step, you click on next, you proceed to the next one, 
and until you are completed with the entire process. So let's go ahead and take a look at the demo of this. So this is a demo of how the um, tab with steps is going to work like. So once I click on next, it takes me to the next section. And then once I go to the final step, I go ahead and then um, should I say proceed or finish up the entire process. So that is with a tab option in here. And uh, you also have some sort of um, events which are now added to the tab option, which allows you to specify how elemental objects are going to behave, especially when using the tab um, option of um, object. And then once you come to accordion also, you have um, some properties um, added to it, especially with the alignment of the icons and, and, and so on. So you can also specify how you want that to behave. And as you can see, you have examples over here. Now there's a list view to which allows you to add badges to object, text, icons, and so more depending on what exactly your website is about and the rest. So there's actually a cool and easy way to, you know, see or track new information or information that probably needs attention on a website. So that's, that's it. Um, examples of how it has been implemented in here. And then you have some, you know, templates also, which has some of um, these used as part of that. Now the overlay menu also has, um, should I say, um, positioning or direction which allows you to specify how you, how you want the overlay menu to display, being it from left to right or from right to left, you can also do that. And then you also have, you know, sub menu, how you want them to also, um, should I say, um, appear or display. So you can also, um, specify that over there. So we there's drill down, there's expandable, which, um, you actually can see, you know, two different images of how they are going to behave once they are used. And then there are some more improvement to the overlay menu as well as you have transitions which are also part of it and then you also have display here how you want overlay menus to display whenever they are added to a website you can actually see a representation of um, this is pop close you have inline as well as you have pop open you can actually use this to create some sort of fancy um, menus especially using the panel menu also using um, some of these options which you have in here so let's continue down and uh, I think so. I think so. This is a CSS menu, which now add, um, has a support for icons as part of the menu items or menu list in there. So you can actually add icons to your uh, menus uh, in your CSS menu, which is cool here. And then also just as we saw for the overlay menu as part of, uh, especially with direction, you can also specify how you want your CSS menu to display, being it from left to right also or also from right to left. And then there are some few more features added to the CSS uh, menu in here. Let's just go ahead and take a look at a demo of this and then see how that is actually going to behave. Let me just go ahead and close this. So as you can see, we have our icons here and then we have some sort of transitions also set to our CSS menu. So version 16, like I keep saying, is going to be a lot more um, awesome, especially with the new features we are seeing in here. And then also with a teamable menu, it has um, a control a way for you to go about orientation, especially with the positioning of um, menus with, within your teamable menu. So you have um, from top start, top end, and, and so on with your, um, should I say, positioning of object or so that menu in your teamable menu. And once we scroll down, there are some few more, you know, added functionalities to the teamable menu. As well as we have the responsive menu this time around has the ability to set border around your menu icons being it for all or for individual menu items so that's um with the responsive menu and then there's some few more added features to it um especially with alignment which is for mobile that's just, it says a mobile alignment property that specify the test alignment when the menu is in mobile mode so now you can control how you have your Object, especially within your responsive menu, that's where the text display or align once you are using them for your mobile or responsive project. And then with the pagination menu, now has the ability to, to display circular items that is set um, by the radius. That is, if you want to go about configuring the um, pagination um, menu, you can actually set border radius to 500 to have a total um, round, you know, pagination in there. And then you also have uh, some improvements which has been added to the event um, using events in your project and then you also have some 
improvement also with the transitions this time around um there are some more added you know transition properties to to it so let's just go ahead and take a look at the final page and then that should be some of the things we should be looking forward to in version 16 so we have scroll transitions so now you have um the chance to control how you know transitions especially when they are on scroll how they should appear so you can change the property as well as you can change the value and then also with toast which is more or less like a notification um object that you can use in your project this time around you have the event section which allows you to control how the toast should probably show or hide depending on how you want it in your website so you can actually control that using the um the event section and then also as part of the login tools this time around you have the chance to select the kind of algorithm which is going to be used to encrypt especially your password so there's the hash um, algorithm property which um add support for improved password hashing and better security using bcrypt as a uh, alternative for md5 so md5 we know to be very secure so there's also um that is bscript which is also going to have its um own capabilities in there so that has to do with um, credentials being a password especially password for your website project and then also so one of the features that was lacking or that was lagged especially with previous version has to do with deleting account so i've had instances where people have asked me how can um, they have their account deleted in case they don't um, they are no longer interested in whatever service whatever it is that they signed up for so this is actually going to address that you have this delete um, account which is um, going to help you, you know, in case you are no longer interested in, should I say, website or whatever offerings that you were signed up to, you can actually have uh, your account deleted. And then also um, with a logout button has some kind of, you know, um, improved functionalities which are added to it. And then as well as you can also add icons to make it easier for people to locate the logout button. And then some few more, you know, properties added to the logout um, button. And then you also have the sign-in tools which added support for math capture so just as we saw with the capture you can specify the kind of capture you want to use especially when you're using the um, sign-in tool for or even the sign up tool with your um, website and then you also have um, the um, this player that's the soundcloud player as part of the ready to use javascript which has been added for um, easy um, that is if you want to add any kind of sound or song which is on soundcloud it's easier to actually use this player to go about and then there's also a couple of other features especially with um, javascript which has to do with a facebook plugin set of plugins in here being it's like comment um, share and so on so you have the chance to actually configure that in there so as you can see you have um, some of these um, being displayed in here so basically these are some of the features that we should look forward to in version 16 of wizzy web builder in case you can't keep calm just as myself just um, keep an eye on this section and look forward to when it is going to be released um, that is in the forum section and once it's released of course i'm going to try my possible best to make videos or tutorials on using some of these objects or features or elements um, we've actually gone through with um this post so that is just about it for this video i know it's a lengthy one but uh i'll try to make shorter ones especially with the tutorials and subsequent videos thank you very much for watching bye for now